All right, so let's jump into today. So here's the topic for today. The topic for today is excuses that top producers never make. Excuses that top producers never make, All right? So do a be honest. Can the real estate business be challenging? Yeah. Either, I mean, for those of you, I could see your picture, you're shaking your heads. If I don't see your picture, put a one in the chat box if the real estate business can be challenging sometimes or all the time even. All right, so let's, don't be shy. Don't be shy. There we go. All right, all right. It's funner when there's more participation. The real estate business is challenging. No one is ever going to accuse anyone of saying that the real estate business is challenging. Saying the real estate business is challenging is not an excuse. That is a reality. Okay. Mike Ferry says all the time, this is a simple business. It's just not easy. So it can be a challenging business. What we have to make sure we're protecting ourselves against though is the excuses that it's challenging and I can't be productive. That's where we have to kind of step back and alter our mindset here and alter the way we look at things. Challenging, yes. Impossible, no. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So let's talk about some of the excuses that top producers never make. They're not written in any particular order. It's just how they're written down. First one I wrote down is excuse number one, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Be honest. Have you ever said, I don't have enough time? Me, Felicia, Gustavo, and 25 liars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Luis is there and Tyrone and Tess and Ernie. Okay, all right, we're getting some people here. All right, I don't have enough time. The reality is, if you don't have enough time in your day, it's more likely that you just simply have a time management problem. Every, you've all heard the saying, right? Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. How is it that some people can accomplish this in 24 hours and some people only accomplish this? So here's what, here's what I wrote down. Write this down. There are 48 30-minute segments in a day. It's 24 hours in a day, two 30-minute segments per hour. So there's 48 30-minute segments in a day. The question is, how are you spending those 48 segments? So let's think about this. Should you role play scripts and objection handlers every workday? Yes? Three, yes, see, yes, yes, I, I yes. A, yeah. I see a couple of you agreeing. Some of you, if, if you either unmute yourself or put something in the chat box. If, you're, if Your pictures, I can see you. A lot of you don't have your pictures. So either comment in the chat box or unmute or something. Okay, so one, if you role play your scripts and objection handlers for 30 minutes, that's one 30 minute segment. Okay, so we're at one. Do you think if you were role played your listing presentation every day, that would help you? Yeah, I see some of you nodding. That's great. Again, for those of you that are not on camera, put something in the chat box. Let me know you're alive. All right, okay. So let's say you did that for 30 minutes. That's another 30 minute segment. So one segment for role play scripts and objection handlers, one play for one segment for role playing listing presentation. If you preview property and you spent one hour previewing property, how many homes, basic homes, could you see in an hour? I, I mean, be honest with me. What, what do you think you could see in an hour? Two, three, four, three, four, 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 five. four, five, three. Okay. I know some of you, it all depends on the area. Some of you, a little ruler areas might three. take longer. Three. Okay. So let's just say three. 
So if you previewed three homes a day, five days a week, that's 15 a week. You did that for 40 weeks, that's 600 homes a year. Would that help you? Okay, yep. so one hour of previewing property a day. So that's two segments, two 30 minute segments, right? So we've got one 30 minute segment for role playing scripts, one 30 minute segment for role playing listing presentation, two segments for previewing property. Okay, prospecting, right? So is it reasonable, tell me if I'm wrong, is it reasonable to prospect three hours a day? Mm -hmm. three hours. Everyone agrees three hours a day. Some of you are prospecting more, some of you maybe slightly less, but three hours. Okay, so three hours is, you get the gist here, six segments. Six segments, six 30 minute segments. And then you come to training classes like this and, and Cindy's classes and things like that. So that's about an hour. So let's call that two segments. So here's the thing. If I role played the scripts 30 minutes a day, if I role played the listing presentation 30 minutes a day, if I previewed homes for an hour, prospected for three hours and went to a training class a day, that gives me total. Uh, now, hold on. If I did all of that, would I have a productive day? Yeah, pretty much. If I did all that, 30 yeah. minutes of role-playing scripts, 30 minutes of role-playing listening presentation, three hours of prospecting, an hour of previewing, and going to a training class, is that a productive day? Would I probably no. be very productive in my business? Okay. Yes. So all of that equals 12 30-minute segments in your day. Now, remember, you have 48 total. And all we did was cover 12, which means you still have 36 more segments in your day. Now, okay, you're going to sleep for some of those. You're going to spend time for family with someone else. But the point is, if you really just focused on the important stuff in your business, you're really not, you really have a lot of other time. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay, yes. and how we kind of broke that down a little bit. So look at your schedule, look at your time. How many 30 minute segments are you dedicating to those basic things versus other things? There are 48 30 minute segments in a day. How are you spending yours? I wrote down here, this is from Valerie Caro. We've heard this a hundred times if you've been around Mike Ferry for a long time. The tighter your schedule, the more freedom you have. If you don't have enough time, if you're telling yourself, I don't have enough time, it's because your schedule, chances are, is not in order. <clears throat> or more likely, you just don't have a schedule. It's just wake up and go as, go as it flows. And yet there's people like Valerie Caro, who said this quote, who gets into the office at 6.15 and she's out of the office by 3.30 Monday through Friday. Well, how does she do that? Well, because between 6.15 and 3.30, it's boom, 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 boom. It's 6.15, get in, you know, check all my voicemails, check my emails, all this stuff. Seven o'clock, I'm on role play. 7.30, I'm on the phones. Appointments are at 11 and 2. Every day. You could do the same thing. <clears throat> Everyone has enough time. Now, here's what I want you to write down. You have enough time to accomplish your goals. So you might say, well, I don't have enough time to do 50 deals a year because, you know, I'm taking care of, you know, parents and kids and this and that, or I've got some health issues or things along those lines. So you might not have enough time to do that business, but whatever your goals are, you have enough time to accomplish that. Don't tell you don't have enough time. And if you need help with the schedule, let me know, let your coach know and just say, hey, look, I need to fix my schedule because I feel like I don't have enough time. We will, we will help you do that. All right. Second, second excuse I wrote down, nobody is buying or selling because of blank. Top producers never make this excuse. Nobody is buying or selling because of blank. Fill in the blank. So... Be honest, give me an example of 
uh, some, uh, what somebody could fill in that blank with. Either you've said it or you've heard somebody else say it. Well, nobody's buying or selling because of what? Give me an example. Nobody's selling because uh, there's no houses to buy. There's no houses to buy, right? Okay, so there's no houses to buy. So Prices we're gonna... are too high. Okay, great. <clears throat> Got it. No house to buy. Prices are too high. What else? What would be another example of uh, an event, a time of year, a, an excuse that people would say, well, nobody's buying or selling because of what? Give Holidays. Me Holidays. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So here's the thing. Here's what I wrote down here. I wrote down three additional ones to the ones you all said. Very true. I wrote down here, nobody's buying or selling because of the holidays. So in the fourth quarter of 2021, in our MLS, now, if you're outside of our MLS, you look at, you know, look at your own MLS, your own marketplace. But in our MLS, just our local MLS, in the fourth quarter, there were 139,158 sides closed, 139,158. In the fourth quarter, in our local MLS, one hundred third, almost just over one hundred thirty nine thousand sides were closed. <clears throat> so, I mean, how many how many sides do you need to close a month, a quarter, to have a real, a really good month? So, okay, so that's not the case. I wrote down here because I hear this every time this comes around. Well, you know, it's the election season. Things are slow. I hear that all the time. Now, there's no elections coming up, okay? But this keep this in mind for future reference. Write a note to future self the next time an election comes around. Well, the election season. So I went down to 2020 was the last election, presidential election. So I looked at the months August, September, October, November, right? That's kind of like the heart of the election season. 2020, MLS. Almost 200,000 sides were closed in those months. 198, 176. 198,176 sides were closed during those months. I wrote down third one, COVID, right? Well, nobody's buying or selling. COVID's going on. Everything's crazy. All right. 2020 and 2021. 2021. 2020 and 2021, those two years in our MLS, over 1 million sides were closed. 1,065,946 during those two years. A million. That's a lot of deals. So the point I'm bringing up here is the excuse of, well, nobody's buying or selling because of what? The next time that enters your mind. Go back and look at the numbers and find out if it's actually true. The interesting thing is during COVID, during COVID, the lowest closing month during COVID was May of 2020, right? Because everything kind of shut down in March. So closings in May were the lowest. And even in May, there were 25,000 closings. Don't ever use the excuse, nobody's buying or selling because of blank. Okay, there's always, now there might be less, there's less deals in the fourth quarter compared to the third quarter. Yes, but there's always deals. Don't ever use that excuse. Okay. I wrote down here third, I can't close a lot of deals because I don't have a big database. I can't close a lot of deals because I don't have a big database. Well, these agents have huge databases. Tess, let me ask you a question. How long have you been in real estate? 25. Okay. On day one, how many people were in your database? I think there was only like 25, 28. 28 people in your database day one. And here you are 25 years later, pretty consistently a centurion level producer you had to start but you but you started right right you didn't just walk into real estate with 400 people in your database no no 
So what'd you do? What'd you do day one when you only had 25 people in your database and you needed deals? Well, I first call the people that I know because they uh-huh. know me and uh, let them know that I'm now in real estate, uh, that I need their help so far um, for my business. Yep. Who you think would like to be doing anything as far as real estate? Great. And then after you called those 25 people, what'd you do? After calling those people, I had to also look other sources. Okay. So you just asked the assistance of my broker. (laughs) And you just call people. Yeah. Just started talking. (laughs) It's funny. He gave me a lead of a buyer. Oh my God, Robert. I think I probably shown this lady. I can't remember, maybe a hundred homes at that time before he, she even bought a property. You know, I didn't know what to do. It's like going in a pool. You don't know how to swim, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get it. So, I mean, it happens, right? Not all these agents walk into real estate with a 400 person database. Mm-hmm. And we hear this all the time. So you think, well, you know, you look at someone like Tess now and you go, well, yeah, look at her database. Yeah, she started out with 25. You look at someone like Melinda, who's got an 800 person database. Well, yeah, of course she's making that much money. Look at her database. She started with zero. She moved here from Wisconsin by herself. It started with zero. Well, Bernie Gallerini, his team's going to make $7 million this year in Tennessee. Yeah, Bernie Gallerini is originally from Las Vegas. When he moved to Tennessee, the only person he knew was his wife. It's not, yes, the database helps you at some point, but don't use the excuse that you can't do business because you don't have a big database. You have to get out there and talk to people. You have to get on the phones. You have to get on the doors. You have to network. The database helps eventually, but that's not what starts the big producers. They don't walk into real estate with 500 people in there that are just handing them business. Okay. It's just not the way it works. Get on the phone, talk to people, build the database. And the way you build the database is show them that you know what you're doing, that you know what you're doing. I wrote down here, I can't close a lot of deals because I can't afford marketing. I can't close a lot of deals because I can't afford marketing. So Let me ask you this. Does everybody here have a cell phone? Okay. And everybody's bill is paid. Everyone's up to date. Okay. Everyone's cell phone is working. Great. You just paid for your first marketing. Get the cell phone, start dialing. Here's the script. Call these people. Why I only have 25 people in there, as Tess said. Start with those 25. Hey, Jane, Robert Hertel, how you doing? Just want to let you know. Not sure if you're aware or not, but I'm actually in real estate. I'm a part of XXXXX. I'm just calling to give you an update on the real estate market. This many homes have sold. This many sold for list price and above. I'm curious, who do you know that might want to buy or sell? That bill's paid. That marketing's already paid. Let me ask you, do you need to pay for scripts? No. No. Okay. So the cell phone's paid and the script is free. Marketing paid for. (laughs) Done. Okay. But what about postcards? Let me tell you, let me give you a little dirty secret. You can make it in real estate and make a lot of money and never send a postcard in your entire life. I'm not saying for those of you that do it and it works, do it. But you can actually never send a postcard your entire life in real estate and make a lot of money if you use that device that I just told you about that you're already paying for and you use those scripts that you didn't pay for. Well, what about social media ads? See postcard comment above. Now, can these things help? Let's be honest. Who here has, and I'm saying this in a positive way. I'm not saying this in a negative way. Have you ever sent a postcard or done some sort of marketing piece and gotten a deal out of it? Has that happened? 
for some of you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of you, yes, some of you know. It happens. So I'm not saying it's it, you can't do it ever, but don't ever use the excuse, well, I can't marketing. I, you know, they, I'm, I'm not getting as much business. These people have billboards. These people have bus benches. These people, you know, they're on all these Facebook ads and things like that. Okay. There's something more powerful than all of that stuff. And it's verbal communication. A hundred and fifty, write this down, a hundred and fifty verbal conversations a week will get you more business than 10,000 cars a week seeing your billboard. Say that again. 150 verbal conversations a week will get you more business than 10,000 cars seeing your billboard. Nice. Now, I'm not saying for those of you that do the billboard, I'm not saying if, if you want to do it, do it because you maybe you get some business from it. This is for the people that say, I don't have the money to spend for marketing and that's why I'm not getting the business. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Okay, use what you have. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> well, I don't have a list. How, how? I don't have a list. Go to the doors. Okay. I want everybody to do this. Okay. For those of you that are on camera, and if you're not on camera, I want you to do it. Okay. I want everybody to go like this. Come on. Okay. There we go. No, there we go. We just paid for another marketing. <laughs> everybody can do it. Go. On. Hello. Oh, hi, my name is Robert Hertel with Century 21 Masters. I'm just going around the area, letting everyone know about some changes in the marketplace. Not sure if you're aware, but our market is changing. Da, 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 da. What do you know that might want to buy or sell? Didn't cost me a dime. Matter of fact, I got a little fitter doing it. I'm walking around, getting my steps in. My Fitbit's going off. <laughs> right? Don't blame it on the marketing. I wrote down here, okay? My language barrier prevents me from closing more deals. <clears throat> My language barrier prevents me from closing more deals. All right, put a one in the chat box or raise your hand if English is not your first language. Everyone hears English is their first language? No, okay, there we go. Gustavo, see that, all right. Not your first language, Trina, Sasha. Right, Tess, not the first language, Young. Right, not your first language. <laughs> Maria, not your first language. Uh, and let me ask you, for those of you where English is not your first language, have you closed few deals in your career? Close one or two? <laughs> Would you use the same language? Would you see the second language that we have? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever right it happens the language barrier is again an excuse that we make to ourselves for those of you that english is not your first language or or let's flip it let's be honest how many of you are born and raised don't raise your hand because you're going to make yourself look bad okay but think about this to yourself how many of you are born and raised American, speak English perfectly well, and are like, well, because I speak English and I don't speak Chinese, I can't get into a Mandarin neighborhood. So it's the reverse. I can't go prospect in Walnut. I can't go prospect in Hacienda Heights. You know, I don't know the language. I can't go prospect in some of these places in East LA excuses lies lies you tell yourself i wrote down here there's no language barrier there's i'm sorry not the language barrier there's no language requirement in real estate there's no language requirement you could speak english you could speak spanish you can speak mandarin taiwanese vietnamese tess what's the what's the the language I'm yeah, there, you go. there you go that one right yeah. spanish French, speak it all, okay? I mean, let's be honest. I don't even speak English very well. <laughs> Come on. 
in high school, in high school, I took four years of Spanish, and obviously four years of English. I, I got an A in Spanish every single semester for all four years. And I could never get anything better than a C or a B in English. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my entire life. You know, just didn't make any sense for me to take a class out of the language I already speak. Anyways, right? There's no language requirement. That's in your head. Okay. And again, if you don't believe me, come tomorrow at 1215 because Nora Avalos is like the epitome of language barriers preventing me from closing more deals, breaking that excuse down. No way, man. No way, no how. Okay. <clears throat> but we tell ourselves that energy enthusiasm will overcome the language. Okay. I wrote down here, I, I can't get into high end sales because my company is not high end. I can't get into high end sales because my company is not a high end company. I can't compete with the Sotheby's of the world. I can't compete with those little boutique places that are high end. Hear that for Century 21 all the time. I won't yep. tell the, the story I told, I think a few days ago or last week, but hear that for Century 21 all the time. Wow, you know, there's no Century 21s in Newport and things like that. Okay. Jeanette Salazar took three listings, closed three listings in Newport Beach. So we're all over $4 million. I don't know. The sellers didn't seem to mind that she was with Century 21. The Scalios closed a $7 million listing in Diamond Bar last year. They didn't seem to mind that the company was a Century 21 company. And others of you that aren't with Century 21 might be saying the same thing. Okay. You got to get out of that in your head there. My company is not high end. That's ridiculous. The company is not high end because you don't give a high end presentation. The company's not high end because you don't perceive yourself as a high end real estate agent. And then you blame the company. That's just not true. Now, if you go to a $4 million listing presentation in Newport Beach and you have the old Century 21 logos and you have the old themes and all those other different things, yeah, that doesn't help you. But if you're modern and sleek and up to date, then you're fine, right? The company's not high end. Or I can't get into high-end sales because I've never sold a high-end home. I can't get into high-end. I've never sold a high-end home. How am I going to break into that market? How am I going to break into that market? So does everyone know the name Ed Kaminsky? Okay, yeah. you heard the name Ed Kaminsky before? Okay, great. So for those of you that don't know, Ed Kaminsky works Manhattan Beach, Southern California. For those of you that are not in Southern California, Manhattan Beach is, I don't know if it's number one, but it's like top five in terms of average price for a zip code is like the highest city. One of the top five cities in all of the state, probably even in the country. And he sells a ton of homes in that zip code. Now, do you think Ed Kaminsky got his real estate license and they automatically said, you have experience selling high-end homes. Day one, he got his real estate license. He went to a listing in Manhattan Beach and said, I've sold a ton of high-end homes. Look at, they, the board of realtors gave it to me. No, you start with one. But he had to convince one of them to list with him, even though he had never sold a multi-million dollar home in Manhattan Beach. But he had the plan, he had the marketing, he had the confidence to go in there and do it. Now, I've never sold a high-end home. I can't break into that market. Stop it. Everybody, this is, write this down. This is really important. Everybody started at one. Every agent that you can think of that did a high-end home, every agent that you can think of that's done a million dollars in deals or anything like that, they started with one. You, if you're giving yourself this excuse, have to start with one. One. Just the same way they did. But it's entirely possible. It is entirely possible to do it. They did it. Why can't you? Why can't you, the same way Ed Kaminsky walked into Manhattan Beach one day with no experience of selling homes there, 
walked into a listing presentation and took a listing. Why can't you do that in the high end area in your town? Because he's what he's, he's better. He's, he somehow has magical words that come out. He gives people like magic beans and they're like, it you know, tricks them into doing things. No, that's the same thing you can do. Same things you can do. I wrote down here next, I can't get into, I can't get deals because another agent dominates this area. I hear this all the time. I can't get deals because another agent dominates this area. Stop it. Even the greatest agents in the world, their market share is like three or 4%. I mean, I'm not joking. It's like three or 4%. Crazy. I told this story the other day, but I'll just repeat it for those of you that missed it. When we first opened our Long Beach office, it was only Melinda and Nancy. And then we started expanding that office and agents would come to the Long Beach office. They would go, gosh, should I work a different area? Because Melinda and Nancy work this area. Melinda and Nancy are two of the biggest agents in the state. Because Melinda and Nancy work this area. Should I work Long Beach? And, and I would show them the stats. I'd say, combined, they have a 4% market share in Long Beach. Combined. Which means 96% of the deals are out there for the taking. Don't ever let an agent or ever think, well, I can't work this farm area because of this agent. Jennifer Matsumoto is the number one agent in Tustin Meadows. There's an area in, in Tustin called Tustin Meadows. She is the number one agent, is, has been every year for the last three years. She closes nine deals a year out of that farm. She has a 20% market share in that farm. She's the number one agent in that farm, a small farm area, has been for three years in a row, and she closes 20% of the listings, not the total size, the listings, which means 80% of the listings she doesn't get. Don't ever be afraid that there's another agent that dominates the marketplace. Here's another thing. So I mentioned Ed Kaminsky. Does everybody know the name Karen Bernardi? You ever heard the name Karen Bernardi? Some of you, a couple of you shaking your head. Of course. Yes. Okay. So yes. Present woman, beautiful. Karen Bernardi is my version of the Michael Jordan of real estate. Okay. This is a woman that has earned, not sales volume, earned in commissions over $60 million. Okay. She's done, she's done okay. Now you would think she's been in business for 30 plus years. She's made over $60 million. She's sold thousands of homes for billions of dollars of volume. You would think that she goes to every listing presentation and they give her the listing, right? You would think that would be the logical thing a seller to do. Does anybody know what her closing ratio is on listings, appointments she goes on? No. It's 85%. Now that's really high, but here's the thing. 15% of the time she loses. Why can't you be one of the 15% that beats her? Somebody's beating her 15% of the time. Somebody's beating her. Well, why can't you do it? Well, gosh, I can't. Karen Bernardi's in Boulder, Colorado. Why? Well, there's no reason for me to work Boulder, Colorado. Are you kidding me? She loses 15% of the time, be one of the 15%. And then she, she only has a five, 10% market share, which means 90% of the market in Boulder is still available. I'm using her as an example because she's like the agent. Don't ever make that excuse to yourself that I can't break into an area because another agent dominates this area. I can't farm this area because another agent's here. This agent's been there for a long time. Let me tell you something. The longer they've been there, chances are the worse they've gotten. That is just a fact. Well, they've been in this, they've been in this market for 30 years. They've, they've been in this farm for 30 years probably means they've gotten lazy or complacent. That's just a fact. Don't ever do that to yourself. All right, couple more excuses. Top producers don't make, right? Here's a buyer one. The buyer always goes with the listing agent. 
God, my buyers, they always go with the listing agent. Well, does anybody know? I just looked this up the other day and I, I could only find it in 2020. The national yeah. stat, so I don't know the local one. What percentage of transactions are double-ended nationally? Anybody want to take a guess? This is from 2020. 20%. 20%. Any other guesses? 15. Okay. 2%. Other, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just seeing if anyone else wants to play. 5%. 5%. 2%. 15. 2%. And 10. You're all, you're all pretty close. Yeah, it's 10%. Wow. According to, according to know, this. I know my numbers will stop on here. Hi, Ms. Rum, Ms. Rady. So 10% nationally of deals are double-ended. So we use the excuse, well, my buyers, you know, they just, they're just going to go to the listing agent. That only happens 10% of the time. 90% of the time they stay with the buyer's agent. They go to the listing agent, probably either one, because they're not very motivated and they're struggling. They want to go to the listing agent or two, you're just not doing a very good job. But don't use the excuse that they're always going to go to the listing agent. <clears throat> And then the last one I wrote down here, I can't get deals in this area because of my age. Can't get deals in this area because of my age. I'm either too young, too old. Who here got into real estate? When, when you first got into real estate, you were 25 or younger. When you first got into real estate, anyone here, were you 25 or younger when you first got into real estate? Nobody? Everyone started when they were older? Okay. Never mind. And then we'll move on. Don't ever use age. You're too old, too young, anything like that. So I wrote down here, right, the beauty of real estate in terms of eliminating excuses. Beauty of real estate in terms of eliminating excuses. We'll wrap up with this. In real estate, to be a great real estate agent, there is no language requirement. There's not a language requirement to close a lot of deals. I wrote down here, there's no gender requirement. Male, female, doesn't matter. Actually, as a matter of fact, the females typically outproduce the men and earn more money. If you don't believe me, look at our company. You have Mark and Al, number one, every year. But then you have Melinda, number two, female. You have Jennifer Matsumoto, number three, female. Meg Middleman, number four, female. You have the Scalio team, which is two females and one male. So that's female dominated. Linda Holmes, female. <laughs> Nancy Dupre, female. I mean, the truth of it is, we're being honest here. Hey, guys. <laughs> Step it up, huh? <laughs> What's got? I mean, the women are taking you to the cleaners, baby. Right? I'm just being honest. Jeanette Salazar, female. <laughs> yeah, all right, we got to step our game up. God, if it wasn't for Mark and Al and Jack Ma, man, I tell you. Uh, but you all are doing really great, but, th but th there's no gender requirement and let's be honest in some other professions, even in 2022, there still is some gender biases. In real estate, there isn't, there's no gender requirement. There's no age requirement. <clears throat> Michael, Yu is 23 years old and made $450,000 last year. Okay. Lucy Ham is in her seventies and made a million dollars last year. It's no age requirement, okay? And there's plenty of people in between. There's no experience requirement. You could be a brand new licensee and go close a bunch of deals. You could be in business for 50 years and go close a bunch of deals. There's no experience requirement. I'll tell you a joke, right? For those of you that are brand new and you wanna know how to gain experience, I stole this joke from Tony Smith, so he's gonna get credit for it. If you're a brand new agent, go find a piece of land and sell it. Sell a piece of land. So that way, the next time you go on an appointment and they say, have you closed any deals? You could say, I've closed a lot.
Come on. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And I, I got to give Tony Smith credit for that one. That's his. <clears throat> There's no experience requirement. There's no education requirement. Okay. Neil Schwartz has openly admitted that in, he barely graduated high school. He had 19 Ds. So you could be that. You could be a Harvard graduate. Doesn't matter. There's no education requirement. And there's no location requirement other than the state, right? Well, I can only work Covina. I can't possibly work Azusa. I can't, you know, no, it's not it. There's no requirements to be successful in this business. Eliminate the excuses. It's challenging. It's very challenging. No one's ever going to argue that it's not challenging. It's a very challenging business, but it's not impossible. Eliminate the excuses. Realize that there's no requirements to be successful in this business. And once you accept that mindset, then you'll be completely unstoppable. All right, everybody. That's all I got. Hopefully there was one or two things in there that were 